Hey, this is John of the Gillum. I just want to tell you real quick about my best-selling book, Sheep No More, The Art of Awareness and Attack Survival. If you haven't heard about this book, what it does is it shows you how to look at yourself from the attacker's point of view. And it goes into a technique that I created from being a Navy SEAL and an FBI special agent and all these different things that I've done, the attacker defender technique, where I teach you how to look at yourself from the attacker's point of view and then use what you learn from looking at yourself that way and using it to build better defenses, awareness, and plans of action where you can't really do anything to mitigate your vulnerabilities. Sheep No More, The Art of Awareness and Attack Survival. There are some stories in there, but you're actually going to walk away from this book learning a technique to make your life safer. Make sure you go get it. It's got two workbooks as well that you can buy to do the threat assessment and the defense assessment. And for the children, The Adventures of Team Little Bigs, a parent's book for children, which is a book of pictures with lessons built into them. And then the parent goes to teamlittlebigs.com and gets the lesson plans. It can also be used by teachers for young children and learning disabled children. Go get them all wherever books are sold. And let's start the show. The truth, the truth, the truth, the truth, the truth, the truth, the truth has arrived. My name is Jonathan Gillum, and this is The Experts. And welcome back to the show. It is uh, great to be here. I guess this is the first show of December, and it's probably going to be one of my shorter shows because I have uh, a lot to do today. But there was one particular thing that I wanted to bring up. Actually, there's two things, but uh, I and I'm one of them. I'm going to cover a little bit later uh, this week or next week, talking about grifters and what exactly is happening with these pop up uh, packs. Uh, political action committees or these these pop up uh i don't want to say missions but where these individuals get together and they use issues that are going on to have rallies to put up gofundme pages uh a lot of the times they whatever donation that they have or website that they put up the money comes to them directly and in some cases their amazon wish list but basically what happens is people that show up to these rallies and not all rallies are bad. I've been to several, spoke at a lot of rallies um, and also meetings. It doesn't necessarily have to be a rally where people learn exactly what's going on and then they're tasked with something to do or they understand that there is actually something they can go out and do to fight against the socialist movement that's rapidly approaching in this country. There's good meetings like that, but I would say the vast majority of these stop to steal and all these different things that are associated around, not of Trump, around Trump, are basically money grabs that people are lining their pockets with. Because they, I don't know if you realize this, folks, but PACs, political action committees, they really are very loosely regulated. I mean, really, they're hardly regulated at all. And people make massive amounts of money by creating an illusion that they are either responsible for uh, solving a problem that is going on or bringing attention to the problem. And all they are doing is soliciting donations for their own worth. They pay their mortgages with it. They buy nice cars. They uh, go on trips. They say, you never see these pack people go and stay at a Holiday Inn or fly coach. These are people that fly first class. They stay in the in the penthouse suites of the hotels wherever they're uh, located, and they buy big, huge homes, drive nice cars, have lots of furs, uh, on and on and on. And the worst part about it, look, if somebody figures out a way in this world to make money, Bill Gates, who's a weirdo, but you know he's made a ton of money. Uh, uh, What's his name? Uh, why am I freaking uh, the guy from Apple? Uh, Jobs, Steve Jobs. Um, you have uh, Forbes. All these different, I mean, there's different people who've made money in different ways. Well, I have no problem with that. But I do have a problem with people making tons of money off of a situation that the American people are involved with that is catastrophic. 
most of these packs where people send their money, especially during political uh, times when uh, re-election or elections are coming up, that money doesn't go to the candidate. That doesn't money doesn't get used a lot of the times for anything except for partying, eating the finest steak, staying in these big hotels, paying their mortgage. It is something that is repeated over and over again. Why am I choosing to harp on it now so hard? And I, on Twitter, a lot of people, well, I shouldn't say a lot of people, the same the same cultish type of attitude that it, it just permeates the left is group think. They get behind these people and they have no idea what the reality is of what they're doing or who they are. And they start supporting them. They help. Maybe they don't send money, but they prop them up on uh, social media. Or in a lot of cases, these accounts that come and defend them are just fake accounts. So it's a group think, which we should always guard against because this is the type of thing can happen. In this case, they're making money off of issues like the stolen election. But in other cases, it could be that, you know, the left is making themselves look like uh, they are a conservative group when in fact, they're not a conservative group. There's one, you know, I've heard of even Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Uh, some guy started a pack to collect money for her uh, a campaign and she wasn't even running for office. It was to get her elected. And her own dad, Mike Huckabee, uh, stepped up and said, don't give money to this thing. I have nothing to do with it. My daughter has nothing to do with it. It's a scam. But these are legal scams. And so you all need to understand this and stop giving your money to these places. What you need to ask yourself before you give money to these is, okay, it's a great name. You know, they, they say that they're doing this for Trump or they're stopping this. Ask yourself, what are they actually doing? First of all, who are these people? Do they have any experience in anything at all? Most of the time, it's no. They're young social media grifters, influencers, as they call them. Uh, they have no experience. And thanks to Fox News, really, to be honest with you, Fox News and the Daily Caller, probably the two biggest culprits in promoting these people. A lot of these young uh, scam artists who believe that they are something have been able to fleece the American public and people will drive thousands of miles and fly and donate money all because they think something is coming out of it. And I've been a part of these things where I showed up and spoke for free and uh, actually donated some of my books to raise money for side auctions because I thought, wow, this is, you know, we got to get on board with this. As it turns out, none of the money that was donated to anything went to anything except to line people's pockets. And it has gotten to a point now where it's actually disruptive of the American people stepping forward and actually taking charge. And this is the same exact thing I was saying the entire time, last year especially. All these rallies were going on. I'm driving all over the place trying to talk and educate people and help them develop plan. Plan is and kit, a kit to protect themselves in case something goes bad and plans of action, how to act instead of reacting when something occurs. Everybody, I'm just giving this as an example. I go all over the place. People buy massive amounts of ammunition. They got 15 different guns. They have no plan. They don't realize that a thousand rounds of one type of ammunition and a thousand rounds of another type of ammunition, you have just limited yourself into whatever fight you're, you may potentially get in. I mean, the reality is most people will never get into a firefight, especially to defend their freedom. It's just not going to happen. Most people will shudder before they ever do that. And secondly, uh, most people don't live in an area where that's actually going to be a, an issue. There's going to be limited areas where these types of events actually happen. You're going to, what's going to happen is you're going to, if you're together and you stand with each other, you're going to have more of a force to stand against things like happen in Utah or, well, it's happened all over the place, in, in L.A. and New York where governors and mayors are overstepping their boundaries and locking people out of churches and locking them into their homes. You stand against that by the thousands, that's greater than any gun you could ever pull out. But people are being led astray. And so as I'm gone around and told people, you know, listen, stop buying all this ammo and all these guns. Have guns, have ammo, have the same gun. 
have two guns, a sidearm and have a long gun. Have uh, the, have several of the same guns so people in your family can utilize those in case something ever goes bad. Uh, have that type of ammo for that type of gun and for the sidearm. And see, now you have a system. Now you have a kit. You know, don't just have a bunch of ammo and guns because, it, listen, you try to move all that stuff, you're going to be stuck. If anything ever hits the fan that bad, are you going to be able to rapidly pick up boxes and boxes of ammo, load them in your car along with stuff while you're freaking out, loading up food and water? It's not going to happen. Now, again, the chance of that happening to you is slim to none, but it's a perfect example of what else is happening. While people are going out and they've been going out and they've been rallying for the president, They failed to realize that they should have been standing against mail-in ballots. They should have been standing against the Democrat Party, which has turned socialist and is trying to change our form of government. The people should have been flexing their muscle and saying no. Instead, what they did was they got sidetracked. They got sidetracked into going, and they were going to vote for the president anyway. And all these rallies that the president showed up and all these rallies that all these people had and support Trump and this and that, they all went there and then they went home. There was no marching orders. There was no uh, any type of unity among the people saying, we will not capitulate. We will not allow this to happen. And quite frankly, that's why we're in, in the position that we're in. So I want you to to look at this. I want you, when people are trying to raise money or they're saying, let's rally for this or rally for that, stop. Just stop for a minute and ask yourself, one, who are these people? What is their experience? Because we need to start having real experienced people come up and tell you, this is what works or this is what didn't work or this is what you can expect because I've lived through it. And those people need to come up give you a five, 10 minute course on that instead of these ridiculous speeches where they talk about everything that they've done, which adds up to nothing, or whether it's walk away or any of these other groups, we're talking about picking up trash in an inner city that is a a hell hole. It's not going to do anything, might motivate a few people, but the reality is people with real experience, with real knowledge that have done things at work or have been through the fire should be able to come up there and tell the people, educate you in five to 10 minutes, and then tell you how you can do it. You should take notes, and then everybody goes back to their prospective homes and gets on board and gets to work. That's what needs to be happening. And that's not what's happening. And so that is infuriating to me, and that's why I'm ranting and raving about this so hard uh, on social media and the, and the backlash I'm getting to is hilarious because it's the same as the left. Look, if you think somebody's up to something, here's the best way to figure out whether they are or not go on Twitter, tweet it, put it directly to them and then watch the responses. If the responses are uniformed and free of individual thought, then you know that person is probably guilty and you are probably right because a, a, a person who is not involved in something nefarious for one, is going to stand up and defend themselves, or they're just going to block you. But what happens inevitably is that they have whole bot farms, and the people that these fake alt-rights and these weirdos on the left, they have the same tactics, which is interesting to me because those tactics didn't exist before a couple of years ago, so it makes me wonder if they are all connected in one way or another, just like the Republican rhinos are connected to the Democrats in the way, and just the way that the... Uh, the deep state people who do nothing are connected to the deep state people who are trying to uh, change the form of government. They're, if you're fleecing the American people and you're misguiding them away from being coordinated, then you're just as guilty as the people who are utilizing that misguiding of the people so that they can change the form of government. And that's all I'm going to say about that. We'll talk more about this later because uh, I, I want to bring up one other thing real quick. This is... I think a perfect example of Silicon Valley and what is occurring, uh, what has been occurring, and the and I've talked about this a lot. The, the Google executives, uh, the uh, in, mainstream media executives, how they're all intertwined. Silicon Valley, Facebook, Twitter, and how everybody always you know thinks that they you know oh well they got a they have a whistleblower in Congress. Well, we know it's true. Well, we know it's true already. We know it's true. And 
there's this guy, Eric Schmidt. I have no idea who the guy is, but when I'm reading this uh, off of CNBC, and I see that he is backing a new $111 million Europe, European venture capital fund. And w- what's interesting is when you when you look at this, one of the other headlines was that he's going to uh, renounce his citizenship and go live in Europe. Uh, so Eric Schmidt is the former CEO of Google, And it says here he's back an early stage European venture capital fund from London uh, firm uh, First Minute Capital. Um, Now, First Minute Capital, uh, First Minute was founded in 2017 by LastMinute.com co-founder Brent Hoberman. No idea who these people are, but he was a Goldman Sachs analyst. And I've realized, I've come to realize about Goldman Sachs is they're about as far left as Hillary Clinton. They love Hillary Clinton. And they love the the leftist globalists because they get richer this way. Remember, Hitler surrounded himself with people like this. They may not be the people that are, you know, shooting the guns or locking people up, but they're the people who fully support whoever's going to make them powerful. So all I want to say about this is the last thing that was written in this story. It's quoting a guy named Crawley, who I'm I'm assuming that he's associated with, uh, with this Uh, first minute team and he's an oxford graduate he said in a statement that first minute wants to back founders who are trying to create platforms that's a big thing these platforms that that gives a voice that will reshape our world quote that will reshape our world unquote globally he says quote globally outstanding technical minds are plotting how to solve the toughest societal and economic challenges with software. Folks, here's the big scary part of this, okay? Silicon Valley is the United States enemy, but it exists in the United States and has been getting tentacles or roots around the world. Now, as you see, the reality of what they've been trying to do all along is very clear. They're trying to globally reshape societal and economic issues or platforms. And that's the reality of this. You know, this thing is moving to a global or has moved to a global scale, but it's getting not just tentacles, but it actually has firm footing in the global community. That's why the other day I was talking about how the EU and Joe Biden are striking up this love affair all of a sudden. They said they had to get rid of the things that Trump has done to get in the way of this of our being unified with the EU, which when you talk to people I've interviewed and talked with people, for instance, who were on the uh, parliament in Italy, they, have, they feel the exact same way that we do. They see stuff, and it's mind-boggling to them how ingrained China is in the European Union and in the things that they're trying to do to keep their country free and, and wholesome. And Italy, they're trying to destroy it, the EU. They're trying to change it into something that it's not, and they're doing a very good job of it. So Biden goes out, as I reported before. He goes out and says that he's going to make America... Uh, I can't remember the exact words, but it was make America mean something again. And then he's going to do that by rolling back all the America first stuff that Trump did. What is it? What does that even mean? The guy talks out of the side of his mouth. So do these people. They always talk about, oh, how stock markets and Goldman Sachs and and, uh, Silicon Valley, how these things are stalwarts in the American economy. The reality is they want to take the power that they've created here and they want to build globally with other evil socialist globalists and reality is what you what all these people think socialism is great i want to pay for college i'll have free health care and this and that that is simply giving you what you need so that you will give away all your freedoms just enough to where you can give away all those things that is what's occurring so that's it. It's a very short show today, but those are some things I want you to look at. And I'm going to uh, come back tomorrow. I'll have a little bit of a longer show. And I'm going to try, I may bring Drago back on this week to talk to him a little bit more. I think we we had some other things that we needed to talk about, a lot about what I've talked about today. And then some other guests that are actually making a difference, which you need to hear. 
you need to understand there's there's people out there that feel like we do that understand what we do and they're growing movements but these movements have legs these movements are actually leading the people to action not just getting them to show up and wave a flag and then go home and sit on their computers or their cell phones these are real plans and calls to action so that that'll be coming up as well um this week and in the following week so i hope uh you enjoy this and share it with everybody make sure you subscribe because the numbers count i want you to think about something if you're thinking about going to a rally or you're looking at these rallies on tv or the internet i want you to stop for a second and ask yourself who are these people what are they actually doing they're not stopping anything they're not stopping fraud in the election system it's already occurred my goodness, the president is having a terrible time trying to get to the truth with this. Listen, why do I keep bringing this up? Because while these grifters are lining their pockets and saying, hey, look over here, let's rally over here, the leftists and the globalists and the rhinos are destroying the country over there. What needs to happen is the people come together and listen to people who've been through the fire and have made a difference and they need to repeat it and save this nation. I'm Jonathan Gillum. This is The Experts. The truth has arrived. Peace and I'm out of here.